in there. I think I must have gotten disconnected. We're gonna keep going here. Gonna grab a little bit more icing sugar. Hi guys, sorry I got disconnected before. All right, so now I feel confident that that ratio is correct. And I'm also going to add in the cornstarch. This is six grams of cornstarch. make that right again. Let's hope we get this right. I'm really crossing my fingers for this one that the French method is going to prevail. But you know what? It is so important to face failure so that we can do it right. get all teachery on you. <laughs> Just gonna quickly clean this whisk. The powdered sugar was 100 grams of powdered sugar. move you over to my second kitchen. I've got my butter that was hanging out from our Italian meringue. Okay. Put my whisk attachment on. All right. I hope everybody's fingers and toes are crossed <laughs> so that it works this time. Thank you. 
next time around, I think I'll show you guys the uh, Italian meringue method and how that works. So we're gonna whip that up. Add in our tiny amount of coloring, really, really tiny. Slowly pour in our sugar. And I really want to keep a close eye on it this time just like I did last time. Thank you, by the way, if you're rejoining after my other live went all wonky. And this is going to increase in volume a little bit. Let's check on it. It's looking pretty soupy mm. still. Yeah, we're not there yet. Take a look. Yeah, I'd say that's good. Okay, I hope everybody is hoping against hope that this is gonna work. It worked beautifully last time, so let's hope it works this time. Okay, now before I actually incorporate them, I just wanna show you, here's what our other ones look like. Not fun, not right, not even peeling away from the sheet properly. Okay, so we did have feet, but problems galore on this side. So I'm going to take those off. I want to save my pro mat here because I want to use it. And of course, nothing really has to go to waste. You can use this in different ways. You can just eat it as a rejected macaron. The amount of rejected macarons that I've had in my time, so many. Now, if you have other issues like cracked shells, maybe they are the right consistency, but they just cracked for some reason. Um, I like to turn them into geode macarons. I find that really, really beautiful. And honestly, you don't even notice that they're wrecked. This is what I love about the Pro Mat too. Nothing sticks to it. Okay. Here we go. Round two, final round of trying to make this recipe work.
you ever watch that channel, um, Threadbanger? I was always a huge, huge fan of that channel. And I feel like, um, when she goes through all her fails, <laughs> when she's baking, and I think she did a macaron video, actually. And of course, there's me shouting at my computer, oh, don't do that. <laughs> but here I am, having a fail of my own. Okay. Thanks so much, Sarama. Yeah, it's pretty cool having these opportunities. Okay. Just gonna quickly So now we're going to do that macaronage again. Here we go. The meringue is beautiful as it was last time. Really got to hurry because my husband is keeping the kids upstairs as long as he can, but... My son is not a fan of that. So hopefully these will work out. And it's nice because there's no rest. All right, here we go. Round two. I feel like I'll be able to tell if it's going to work this time or not. Folding it. Folding it in. Still using that folding method, really getting underneath. Okay, I'm feeling more hopeful, guys. This is a good sign. It's just, it, and that's the thing, it's a feeling that you can get when you know it's, it's right. This batter is significantly looser. I think it's because I was extra, extra careful with making sure that after I put everything through a sieve, I have the ratio right again. Not the fault of the recipe, my fault. This differs so much from the batter that we had earlier. So if you were here earlier, you can see this has much more viscosity. It's way more batter-like, like a thick, almost pancake batter. I've heard it be described as a honey-like lava consistency. And that's what we want. All right, sweetie fam, I'm feeling good. Feeling good now. Okay. Now, as much as it pains me, I think I am going to use a different piping bag because I don't want to get messed up. I still haven't gotten my favorite tipless piping bags back in stock and I can't seem to purchase them anywhere else but that store that I like. going to make sure everything and I'm not going to use that other macaron pan that I had I'm going to use this one all right and then I'll use I'll use the parchment so you can see okay pretty clean pretty good here we go I'm very excited about the cake that I get to make this weekend. It is a um, unicorn cake, which is going to be super fun. 
but it's not like the classic unicorn cake. It's like a unicorn cake where I get to do whatever I want. So I'm hoping to go kind of like that mystical, magical kind of route, but we'll see. We'll see where the wind blows me. All right, here we go. Do you guys pipe your macarons free-handed or do you use a stencil? I, I generally use a stencil, but... like a stencil like it just even when you can pipe pretty well I just find I like that little extra bit of assurance that everything's gonna fit together and if I'm doing shaped macarons I really like to make sure because it's incredibly difficult to get that perfect when you're doing something shaped I love having TV and music on when I'm baking, so when I'm doing a live, I always feel like it's so empty sounding in my house. Okay. Okay, I'm going to slam my pants down. tricky like I said before. Hmm. Left like point on the edge. Let's try and do it this way. too much because I don't want those ones in the edges to get compromised. Okay, now generally when I use no rest, I like to have these get that nice little film on the top, but this is no rest, so we're not going to get any film. Sorry, I'm just making these a little bit more. Okay, 
Looks good to me. Let's put these in the oven and cross our fingers. Okay, 315 degrees Fahrenheit. 15 minutes with a turn around in the middle. Okay, let's do this on a different type of sheet. This time we're going to use the parchment. And I really want to make sure that my parchment is fitting on here perfectly. Let's do something fun. Let's try. And the key is to make sure we get that right, both sides. It's hard when you get down to the end here. Let's do some mini ones. Now, of course, mini ones are going to bake faster, but it's okay. Can I get two more? We'll see. I don't know if I can get any more. Got it. Got, got those little mini ones out there. Okay. And I'm going to bang this pan. I'm just going to let those air bubbles there. Oops. Let's add a little bit more cushion to that. Okay. Now, hopefully, those macarons are where they should be at. I do not know what is up with my internet today. So what I can learn from that is I think that the ratio of the dry ingredients, even though I've talked about it before with you guys, was a little bit off. So I think that that's why I had the difficulty. So whenever you can, use your, um, use your scale for measuring. Now let's talk macaron fillings. I really love filling my macarons with chocolate ganache. I love using compost. But I think that one of the big things is that a lot of us, um, or at least when I was first filling up my macarons, I would often not use the right thing. So I would use like a lemon curd, but then I would just put the lemon curd in and then everything would fall out. So you do want to make sure that you're always using a buttercream down. And I will say that you can, like for example, for ganache, you can up the ratio so it's very pipeable and it stays together. But I personally like a nice kind of luscious and smooth filling that's not too hard when it comes to a macaron. And if I want that, then I have to have the ratio a little bit lower. So definitely um, make sure that you use a ganache that's nice and smooth and then just create a buttercream dam and I'm going to show you how to do that. Just 
tidying up here, and then I will answer any questions that you guys might have. So go ahead and start asking questions, and I will answer. So I want to show you guys this. One of the things that I'm working on right now, really bizarre, this is actually cucumber that is dehydrated. And I'm going to be using this in my cake tutorial. If you saw my story, I showed you how I was um, cutting up cucumbers and I'm making it into this. And this is part of that really big cake project that I was telling you guys about. And I have a lot of different things that I have to accomplish with that cake. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name there. Okay. And if you ever have any like little things like this, you can take it off as well. The type of heat you use also matters in your oven. Obviously, these macarons really, really need a lot of heat. So you want an oven that is in good working order. Okay, the moment of truth, I'm gonna show you guys to see. This is what I always see whenever I open my oven door. Sorry guys, a little earthquake here. Okay, let's see. I have not opened this yet, so we're gonna see what, how it looks. <gasps> Yay! We've got feet. And we've got that nice texture and everything on top. So we're going to go for another seven-ish minutes here. I'm just going to put you down. Oops. It's a lot of breadcrumbs. <laughs> Sorry, my friends. Okay. I'm going to flip this around. It's a little tricky with my pans with this. Okay, gonna go in for another seven minutes here. And I'm gonna read that chat. Hey Ashley, I have a question. If you don't have an oven thermometer, how do you ensure you don't get macarons affected by the hot spots? So, just like what I did, and I had tons of hot spots inside of my oven, both of my ovens, both my gas and my electric here have hot spots. So, the way that I combat that is I just open my oven door and I do rotate the pans. Um, and even with my own macaron recipe, my one that uses Italian meringue, I also rotate the pans. And that air escaping actually really helps with that, and it helps even out that temperature. And then once, you're, um, once you put it back in, it's like good to go. Somebody also, my teacher that taught me how to make macarons, she also said something about, there was a process that she said where it was about like getting everything um, calibrated properly. So right now, my oven temperature can tell me what my oven is at. So from opening that oven door, my oven dropped 15 degrees, um, which is totally fine. And actually my own recipe requires that you drop the oven temperature as well. Yeah, and it's, it, it's so interesting because I learned that it's something that is actually, you want that, which I wouldn't have thought. Okay, I'm just going to do some tidying. How many of you guys are clean as you go, kitchen people? 
And how many of you are just leave it a giant mess until you're all done? <laughs> comments, in the comments. I'm <laughs> not pleased to go. I was late hopping on. Did you do the French method and do egg whites have to be room temp? Okay, so Alexis, you got to miss uh, me messing up. <laughs> so the first time around, it was a complete fail. I did bring my egg whites to room temperature, that which is usually supposed to help things along. Now, I believe that I maybe um, was a little bit overzealous with the dry ingredients, and that is why I have the wrong texture. Um, so. For those of you that missed it, this was my first attempt. Yucky, disgusting, they're like, just like cookies. I should bite them too. Oh yeah, those are super unpleasant. <laughs> they're not bright at all, they're gummy in texture. So, yeah, <clears throat> the taste is, is fine, but the texture is just like horrible. But we are having success with this second one, and I use the exact same method. Minutes ago, can you make a rainbow colored batch out of one recipe? Yes, you can if you have a lot of hours. <laughs> so I find that using the French method to actually color your macarons is incredibly challenging. And that's when you're going to end up with macarons that are off with their texture. I've done it and I have videos showing how to actually do it with the Italian method. But it's all about pre-weighing out all of your ingredients and separating them out. And if you have a small batch of macarons, like for example, the batch that we made just now, I would call this a small batch because my macaron recipe makes around 80 macarons. And I feel like that's a lot easier to color that many macarons, um, sorry, to color that much macaron batter. Because by the time you section it off into the colors of the rainbow, there's a lot of colors in the rainbow on that spectrum. And so once you do that, you're like basically mixing up this amount of color. And if you're only mixing up this amount of batter, you're going to mess up that macaronage phase no matter how, um, you know, advanced you are. It just happens because it's the way that we have to incorporate the ingredients. So I would suggest if you're going to color macarons and do multiple like that, you do it with a big batch. I excessively clean during baking. Take after my dad. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I clean too while baking, and my husband still says it's such a mess in here, but he doesn't know how bad it could really be. <laughs> All right. We are almost there with that first batch. I am so excited for them to come out. What a triumph after that first fail. And this is the thing, guys. When I first started watching tutorials on YouTube, it just felt like nobody ever failed. Nobody ever had mistakes. Everybody was just doing it right. So it can really bring you down, but honestly, the, the fails that happen are, they still happen regardless of how much um, experience you have. So take off of that. <laughs> Gonna place this down. And for those of you that are just stopping by, here are the heart ones that I made. Now when you're piping shapes, so, so important that you don't pipe an outline and fill. So it's not like the way you do with royal icing or anything like that. I find it messes it up every time when I do it that way. Oh, they're so beautiful and shiny on top. Can't wait to take them out. Can this live be saved? Totally. Um, I was actually thinking about condensing it and re-editing it down into like a shorter video. Sometimes I do that, especially if I really liked the content on the live. But otherwise, if I don't end up doing that, the live is just going to remain up there. 
So after the live is over, it'll process and then it'll just remain in my video vault. All right, let's see how this did. I'm hoping it's baked thoroughly. This is the other thing that's always a little bit nerve wracking. Yes, these are looking good. Oh, I should have. because my pan is upside down so I need <laughs> I need the two here and again just like with that first batch we do want to leave them on the pan until everything is fully cooled it's not only still cooking right now And of course, we do have some air bubbles going on. I wish I could have slammed the pans down just a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with these. Let's get the next pan in. And if you're new to macaron making, make sure that you do, um, that you have two heavy duty pans so that you can switch off at minimum two heavy duty pans. We'll see if the uh, shaped ones work out. I'm just gonna bring you guys down a little lower here. Ah. <laughs> so nice. And of course those feet will reduce a little bit, but like this one here, she's so beautiful. So I was going to airbrush these, but I think that I will save that for a video. I will airbrush them on a video and you can see how I decorate them, but I will fill them for you on camera today. And filming is an art as well. So let's, let's take a look at the before and after here. Yeah, completely, completely different. The texture, completely. And it's interesting like this film, this skin, this, I don't know what, this is the first time this has happened to me. Yes, yes, Sarama, I think that it does give you a little bit more insight for sure. I'm gonna get that, um, And it was interesting because it, I'm sure on camera, it really looks like I did the same thing. But this feels very, oh, smell. oh, it smells so good. I love getting the different um, frozen fruit at the store, especially when it comes like that. It's, it's awesome. all day with my students <laughs> so I, my voice is a little bit raw so after this I'm going to rest my voice are there any other macaron questions that you guys have specifically about the French method the French no rest method which is just fantastic it saves so much time making macarons is just so, so stressful. I'm going to get my other pan ready. Now, I've 
heard some things lately about resting macarons. And it's it's interesting. You know, I'm gonna face you guys towards me one second. My floor. <laughs> So yeah, I've heard some really interesting things about resting macarons because I've heard that you don't need to rest. Like I've heard of Italian methods where you don't need to rest the macaron. And it was interesting because it was very, very similar to my recipe. It just, it did something different just a little bit. And for, and apparently the resting is actually what causes the cracking, which is interesting because I've never had cracks with my recipe that is a rest um, macaron recipe. So super, super interesting. Yes, flavoring your batter with freeze-dried fruit is awesome. It is amazing. You can also do it with dehydrated fruit as well. I think I did it with lemons, lemon peels. It was like lemon slice with the peel and everything and I had um, candied them and then I dehydrated them and then I chopped it up really fine in the food processor and then it was like awesome. It, the flavor is so, so intense when you do that too and you really don't need too much. You're really just trying not to change the composition of the dry ingredients. So, you know, 10 grams off here and there is not a big deal, but if you're going like 50 grams, that's when it starts to, to really make a difference. So anxious for these to get nice and cooled. Okay, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing here again. So what's great again about the pro mat is you can lift and we can see how it's doing. Oh, so beautiful. That is looking so good. The, um, the bake on that is really, really nice. Not a whole lot of holes or anything. Really, really even baking. I just love this pro mat. If I could rave about anything anymore, it would be the pro mat. <laughs> You guys have been with me on my live. You have stayed the whole time. I give you a medal because that was a long, a long time. I better give my husband a medal too for entertaining the children. Okay, so we're going to peel these two off. I'm going to show you how to fill one and then we will get going. So I'm going to peel these off. You going to be really careful about this. Again, we don't want to rush the process. Oh, so beautiful. Do you guys get this feeling too when you bake something and you know you did it right? Like seriously, the heat that this retains, it, it will burn you so badly. Okay, so let's get these two here. Now when you're matching your macarons, the best way I like to do it is I like to have one and then flip the other one and then we go and then we just do it all in a sequence. Um, okay, let's do this. I'm gonna flip these two over. I'm just gonna do one here. Slightly warm, but not too bad. I just have my round tip on here. Oh, and of course, interrupted by that bell. Oh, yay, the shaped ones are turning out too. Okay. And I'm actually not going to pipe this traditionally. Is there a traditional way? I was taught a particular way. I guess that's why I call it that. I'm going to do kind of like a little pearl around the edge, making it nice and tall, and swooping it forward. Then, if you want to see what that looks like, just like that. 
And I'm going to put in a little bit of my compote, which I already mentioned before. I'm keeping it nice and thick with those chunks in there. Just going to put on top. And there you have it. Beautiful, full macaron. So I will show you how I fill and decorate the rest of these in a follow-up video. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. This was a true, true fail Friday. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, but let's be real, I've been uploading daily. So I will see you for the next one. Bye!